Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Pokemon Pokeball Candy Bomb tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make these gorgeous little Pokeball candy bombs. We've just finished completing our Pokemon Pikachu cake pop so if you're having a little bit of a Pokemon event these two go absolutely perfectly together. Tools and equipment that we will be using today, I've got a couple of just little white sequin sprinkles. They're a bit of an optional extra but you can use them just to accentuate your little Pokeball buttons. I've got some optional little Pokemon printables. So when we smash these out, they're just printed on a little bit of, I think 210 GSM card, but when we smash these candy bombs open, not only are you gonna get the candy inside, everyone at the party is going to get a different Pokemon character and no one's gonna know which character they've got inside. So it adds a little bit of a, I guess a novel approach to something that's traditionally candy. If you do go with this option, please make sure that you let your guests know that these are non-edible. We don't want anybody choking on a Pokemon character. I've got some mini M&Ms, that's just going to be my chosen candy for inside these candy bombs. Some melted white chocolate, some melted red candy melts. I've got some melted black candy melts. I've got my silicone cake pop mold. Now somebody gave me this to bake cake pops in, but for those of you guys that follow my channel, you'll know that the actual traditional way to bake cake pops is actually to take cooled crumbled cake and either ganache or frosting, smoosh it all together and give yourself a really nice rich chocolatey truffley ball rather than just a ball shaped cake. So I had no other use for this silicone cake pop mold and I've been sitting there thinking ever since of ways that I can put it to use so it doesn't go to waste. You can't do this with a metal mold, you will need a silicone mold. I've got a pair of scissors, I've got a toothpick and a paintbrush, a Ziploc bag and just a couple of spoons. So let's get started. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to start chilling each half of our Pokeball. This is where our spoons come in. So I'm just going to take some of that red candy melt and I'm going to use the back of my spoon just to sort of just spoon it in. Now don't put too much in there. You're just putting, it works out to about a quarter of a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon, but we're going to do two coats so it doesn't have to be too thick. And don't worry if you can see a little bit of that red silicone coming through. We'll do a couple of these today. Also make sure that you do about 20% more than what you think you're going to need just to allow for any breakages or any cracking. And then we'll repeat that process with our white. The one thing that you do want to watch while you're doing this is that you do drag that white chocolate or that coloured chocolate all the way up to the side so that you're getting a nice sort of a thickish side on the the edges of your pokeballs because that's going to be where they're going to be most likely to break. All right, now you just want to, before it dries too much, just use your fingers just to clean up just around the edges of each one of those so that you've got a nice, neat, even rim. Then we're going to come back and add another coat. Okay, so we're back from the fridge and those are really nicely set. So we're going to give them a second coat and the reason that I give them two coats is just to make sure that we get a really nice, even distribution and to make sure, I guess it just makes them a little bit quicker to set, a little bit faster to set, but just to make sure that we've really given our sides a nice coating. So you don't want to go too thick with that chocolate or with that candy melt, just because you want to be able to smash into these without too much difficulty and you want to make sure there's plenty of room in there for all that delicious candy and for our little Pokemon characters so they've got a little bit of space. Alright, perfect. So once again, just cleaning up around the edges about another five or so minutes until they're completely set. All right, so we're back from the fridge and those ones have now completely set. Now I love these because you can make them quite a fair way in advance, so you don't have to make them all on the day that you need to use them. So to get them out, you just want to sort of stretch out that silicone. Now this is why you can't use your metal moulds. So I just sort of peel the silicone back and watch them because the little suckers will just pop right out sometimes and go flying across the kitchen bench. So you can see there, you're really just pushing them out and by scraping that chocolate all the way up to the sides you can see we've got a really lovely thick edge that's not going to crack and it's not going to break which is exactly what we want so just pull all of your little pokeball halves out of your silicone mold all right that will do now you want to take some of your candy and just tip them into one half now I'm looking at that one this one here is a little bit more shallow because there's a bit more chocolate in there so I'm going to go with the deeper half so that I get more candy and you can use any candy you like. Nerds would be great in here, it just depends on what you want to serve. So we're going to grab two of our little Pokemon characters and just sit them in amongst that candy and then you want to take your Ziploc bag and just scoop in some of that melted white chocolate. 
Push the chocolate all the way down to the corner of the bag and seal it to make sure there's no air in there. Now, you want to just fashion a little bit of a piping tip here. So grab your Ziploc bag and just take the corner and your pair of scissors and just snip off. There's no exact amount, but you, just, you don't want it to be too thick because you just want to be able to control nicely how much of that chocolate's going to come out. And now, sort of, I guess, the trickiest part. So you want to take one half and then your other half, sit the white on top, and it doesn't really matter what's top and bottom because they're all going to get shoveled around in there or shuffled around in there. And you just want to hold them together. Don't worry if you've got a little bit of a gap. That's totally fine. Try to get them as even as you can though. So now you want to take your Ziploc bag and we're just going to fill in a nice thick line of melted white chocolate all the way around that seal. All right, so from here, you just want to count to five. We just want that to start setting a little bit, but not too much. So now you want to take just a finger and you're just going to swipe around the outside of that pokey ball. We'll repeat that with our second ball. Now you want to make sure that you're not getting too much of it on the red there, but if you do find that you've made a little bit of a mess, just grab a nice smooth knife and you can just sort of drag it along and just shave off any of that white chocolate that's gone where it shouldn't go and that'll just clean up your pokey ball a little bit and also take off any ridges. All right, so we've had a little bit of a tidy up. So now it's time to take our black candy melts and our pokey ball and you just want to use that paintbrush just to paint on a nice center line. Try not to hold on to your pokey ball. I'm just balancing it just a little bit with my fingers. Try not to hold on to it too much. Now, so that I'm not touching that too much, I'm actually going to let that set before I roll it over and keep going with the other line. All right, so there you've got your basic pokey ball pretty much ready to go. What we're gonna do now is just add on his button. So we're just gonna paint a nice big circle right in the middle of that black band. So when you're happy with your circle, just take your toothpick and a little bit of that white chocolate. You want quite a decent, I guess, a little blob here. Pop that down and then taking one of your white sprinkles, pop it in the middle. Perfect. So in a nutshell, there's your little pokey ball candy bomb ready to go. I hope that you guys have loved this tutorial. Make sure that you check out our Pikachu cake pop, the perfect accompaniment to this pokey ball candy bomb. And I know the moment you've all been waiting for is here. You're gonna wanna see me smash it. So to smash these, I always find the best way is to grab I'm gonna use a big spoon, grab your spoon, lay it on the table, and we're just gonna smash it. So there you've got your candy, your Pokeball, and look, our little Pokemon character. Sure to be a hit with the kids and with the big kids. Thanks very much for tuning in to Michael Cake Addiction.